We'll start tonight with what you were listening to there. Some shocking news about the military in this country. Despite years of promised action from leaders in the armed forces, a new report from Statistics Canada today finds a significant increase in sexual assault. The agency's third voluntary survey since 2016 found about 3.5% of regular force members reported they were sexually assaulted in a military workplace or outside of work by military members within the last year. That's up from 1.7% in 2016 and 1.6% 1 in 2018. Lieutenant General Jenny Carignan is the military's chief of professional conduct and culture. She's charged with reforming the force. Hi, Lieutenant General. Good to have you here. Thank you very much for making the time. Thanks, Vashi, for inviting me. The rate of sexual misconduct in the military, according to this report in 2022, has actually increased since the last report in 2018. While the leadership of the military in the interim has insisted they want it and they're committed to seeing it go in a different direction. What do you take from that? So we are, of course, uh, very concerned with the results of the survey. Uh, but we are determined to not uh, detract from, from our target, which is um, eradicate those behaviors within our organization. So uh, again, uh, using those results to better understand and making sure that our initiatives and measures currently being implemented are um, adapted to the, to the reality that we see within the survey. Why do you think they've come up short? So it's, it's too early right now to, uh, to make a determination. Um, the, the sexual misconduct space is a very complex, um, illustrates very complex human dynamics. So uh, when we look at those results, um, they can be both encouraging and at the same time discouraging. Why? Because a uh, higher level of, um, of reporting uh, might uh, indicate better awareness, while a higher level, level of reporting is also not a good place to be, which we're trying to you know, diminish them. Uh, so um, again, we'll need to dig in more and make a more detailed analysis of what this really means. And, and with respect, Lieutenant General, I do have to challenge you on the idea that there's kind of two sides to this coin, and, and only for this reason. I, I take your point usually when we see a higher reporting incidence with, with police, for example, oh, maybe people feel more encouraged. But this actually is, a, is an accounting of people who didn't, e lots of people who also didn't file these reports through the official channels. And in fact, this is the statistics that stood out most to me, that the report also states that the level of reporting of sexual assault has gone down since the previous survey. More than two thirds of victims did not report their experience to anyone in authority, with 41% of those who did not report their sexual assault citing the reason as, quote unquote, belief that it would not make a difference. Surely that indicates to you that I know that you are pursuing a number of policies to combat this, but they are coming up short. So um, the, the dynamics behind reporting are very personal and complex, and we need to make sure that we are addressing the barriers to reporting. And we see this across uh, the various data points and, and indicators that we have uh, within uh, our, our organization currently. So removing those barriers is, is absolutely key to do better. We also know that uh, in the general population, um, the um, people underreport sexual misconduct as well. So we also observe those trends and understand that we need uh, to continue in crafting um, a variety of options for victims to come forward. So this is what has been done uh, with uh, the new, um, um, the newly uh, implemented measure where our members can go directly to the Human Rights Commission. Our members can now um, also uh, go to the police, uh, civilian police directly. Uh, they can go through their chain of command, uh, providing that variety of options that um, where victims have agency over their own complaint. I, and, and, I, and I do take that point, but again, I, I think, and I take the point also that, that there is a, a lack of um, comfort with coming forward w more widely in society. But the difference I would say is, and I've been covering this story since 2015, since Madame Deschamps released her report, which indicated there was a cultural issue within the military too that had to be eradicated in, or in order to address 
the wider issue of the incidence of sexual assault, right? And uh, it is, I think, shocking to people who have been studying it for as long as we have since 2015, when it was so clearly identified what the issues were, that there has been as little progress as there is. Does it trouble you? I know you're working very hard in this space. Does it worry you that everything is going in the opposite direction of where you hoped it would go? So we are concerned about the results, but we also need uh, to uh, see what else is the survey telling us. Uh, so again, that in-depth analysis is required to uh, not jump uh, to, to final conclusion at the moment. So for example, within the survey as well, uh, people in the majority have clearly indicated that they have seen progress over the course of their careers. Um, that uh, a majority of defense team members have positive um, perceptions of their own unit and the way uh, sexual misconducts are handled, um, and as well that they see um, progress in, in, uh, in what we are doing um, and in their own environment and uh, in their workplace. So we can see that uh, there's a variety, there's a variety of uh, data points and, ind and indicators within the survey um, that, that requires a more in-depth analysis to better understand those dynamics. Can I ask you then also, because the other thing that stood out to me was around, uh, and this speaks to the cultural change, the issue of cultural change, the rate of regular force members who experience sexualized and discriminatory, discriminatory be behaviors has increased since the last report. Rates for all 15 behaviors measured by the survey increased in 2022. I think this also informs the issue of recruitment. The Armed Forces has set out a target of 25% women by 2026. The last report I saw pegged it at somewhere at 16%. I understand that there are many things that you're doing and that you're willing to augment in order to address what we see in this report, but is time not of the essence? I mean, if you are trying to recruit women, when they read something like this, I, I imagine the challenge continues to be incredibly immense. It is a challenge and uh, recruiting um, across Canada in, in any organization is a challenge currently and we understand in uh, any organization, or I'm asking about the military specifically based on what we're reading today. But in the military, we do have a challenge. Uh, like many other organizations in Canada, we are um, tackling this in a different way this time around. Uh, we want to be transparent and forward about what we are doing. Um, th as an organization, we are seized and engaged in eradicating uh, misconducts overall because we know uh, that high-performing teams need uh, a safe workplace to be better performing and then highly effective in their daily jobs, especially in the military when we are talking about building strong and resilient teams. So it's extremely important the work we do and of course uh, to uh, recruiting um, the best Canadians out there to do, uh, to do defense. Why do you think the military is failing to recruit women? Um, it's, it's a question of awareness. Um, it's a question of um, going against generational um, norms where traditionally women have not signed up for the military. It has not been something that seemed was possible for them to do. Uh, so there's a lot of that at play as well in attracting women, uh, whether we're talking about uh, STEMs or the military, where it's, it's areas where typically uh, have been recruiting men. So it's, it's doing this work um, that needs to be done at the same time. I, is it possible, though, that it's also exactly what, what is happening today and the, the, the numbers that we are seeing today and the descriptions that we've now seen from two former Supreme Court justices of an you know, of a sexualized culture that is not not treating women in a way in which they would want to be treated in the workplace? I think being fully transparent in doing this work, um, and I think by um, being engaged in doing better and it, like um, putting in place the measures, the structure, and uh, the ways that the, 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 the evolution that we are currently doing um, is making a difference in terms of you know, demonstrating how serious we are about this.
Okay, I'll leave it there. Lieutenant General, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.